start a podcast, create a money making show. Oh, if you think you got the mindset and skill set, then three, two, one, go. Call in all entrepreneurs. If you wanna make more money, build your network and elevate your status. If making money from your show is one of your goals, let Tim Holloway teach you how to make it happen. Let's go. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Money Making Show. I'm your host, Tim Holloway, and I'm glad to be back at you again. Hey, man, I got a special guest. Gosh, we've been, uh, I think I've at least known of you for at least a couple of years, but uh, through different masterminds and stuff, and then we find ourselves uh, in the same mastermind again. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for taking the time, brother. Julian, can you uh, introduce yourself to the audience, brother? I'm Julian Flieger. I own Precision Wraps and Tent, I'm based out of Florida, 35, father of three, happily married, just trying to trying to spread my story and help impact people and yeah. help them to realize that um, their past doesn't define who they are if anything it kind of refines who you can become if you're willing to put in the work to change so yeah 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 that's that's good man that's i like to i like to dive <laughs> into um you know how you you took the leap from um maybe working for the man or or, or normal work into what you're doing now because seems like you stepped out into more of a entrepreneurial role and and you started a business and uh you're trying to trying to get that up and going. So I'm interested in that transition there. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, it all started when I got clean and beat my drug addiction. Okay. Um, I struggled a lot growing up with like self-worth and um, accountability which led to my drug addiction, which when I got clean, I needed, I still struggled with like the self-worth and like finding value in myself. Um, yeah, yeah. So between the drug addiction and getting clean and wanting to really build something to give myself a sense of worth, um, it also had a lot to do with my firstborn son was born at 25 weeks, a pound and 12 ounces. Oh my goodness. Spent his first six months in the hospital. We didn't get to bring him home. So he was six months old. Um, so obviously with that, he required a lot of doctor's appointments and, you know, extra attention. Um, and I just got tired of, you know, because, when you work for a company or when you work for somebody, they, you got two different types of people. You got the understanding kind of people that kind of under, you know, they try to understand what you're going through. And then you got the people that are like, no, you're interfering with yeah, lining yeah. my pockets. And yeah, <laughs> go, uh, yeah. so I lost a couple jobs by, by asking and like requesting off, like I need this. And then I'd have the people like, no, you can't like this job needs done. And I'm like, but my family means more to me than this paycheck. So when, and I kind of grew up like my stepdad, my mom and him have been together since I was five. He owned his own, he still owned his own plumbing company, owned his own plumbing company ever since they got together. So I kind of grew up in like an entrepreneurial household. Um, but really when I was trying to give myself a sense of worth on top mm -hmm. of wanting to be there with my son, because, you know, he was fighting for his life. Um, so I, those two things right there is what kind of fueled me to, you know what, I'm going to, it's a funny, excuse me. Um, I was, I, I was working a job. And I was tired of getting talked down to, um, and I was actually on the phone with my wife discussing some issues with my son. And 
the owner had showed up on the job site and kind of like got real nasty. Yeah. And I yeah. was like, dude, I said, I'm done. Like I walked off. And I had every intention of like going back the next day, but I knew that like I needed to leave because he had done pushed all the buttons because it wasn't like I was just on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Like it was something of importance to me. So I ended up calling off work for a week, like said I had the flu, said I was sick, called off for a week. Um, and meanwhile, like, told my wife, I called off work this week. Well, that week passed by. Monday come around, my wife's like, you're going to go back to work? And I'm like, well, about that. <laughs> I'm going to start my own business. <laughs> and mind you, this is like two weeks before Christmas. Uh -huh. like two, about, this is about two and a half weeks before Christmas. Um, yeah. December of 2016, actually. And you know, we were a one income household. It was just my income because we did have two kids at the time and she was a stay at home mom. And I'm like, I'm gonna start my own business. Mind you, like we had zero savings, zero plan, zero backup plan. Like it was sink or swim. And yeah, yeah. So I got a $300 loan from one of my best friends that was the best man in my wedding and ordered a box of window tent and some squeegees. And I'm like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it happen. I don't know how. Yeah, yeah. But I was in an area that I had grown up in my whole life. So like I knew everybody. And I had started to kind of see like the power of social media, like being mm -hmm. able to make a post and you can tag up to 50 people. So I'm like, well, if I just make a post and tag the 50 people closest to me, then everybody else on them people's pages are going to see it, which then it takes your reach that much further. And that's what I did, Tim. I was like, you know what? Ordered a box of window tent. My guy, helped me with the loan on a Monday evening, the same Monday morning that I told my wife I quit my job. Monday yeah. evening, we were at their house for dinner, and you know, the women and the kids were inside. Me and him were out in the garage. He's like, Julian, he's like, what's wrong, man? And I was like, well, I'm like, nothing, bro. I said, I'm good. He's like, man, he's like, you're lying to me. He's like, I've known you for how many years? He's like, something's up. And I said, well, man, I said, I just quit my job. And I said, I have no idea what I'm going to do. And <laughs> I got Christmas coming up. My wife's birthday is the week before Christmas. The week after Christmas is obviously the first of the year. So your rent's due and all your bills come due. And I'm like, I'm just, I'm going to do it. So he loaned me the $300. Um, yeah, the film came in on a Thursday, and by the time the film had came in, I had already made some Facebook posts and like reached out directly to some close friends and family and let them know what my plan was. And I just, uh, by the time the film had came in, I had had appointments set up from Thursday evening, all day Friday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. Like I had had a week's worth of work lined up. Wow. So. Um, and I believe like I doubted myself, mm -hmm. but I can't imagine what like my wife was feeling at the time. She's like, if I was her, I'd be like, you know, you're the provider. Like, what are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but fortunately enough, man, it was like within three days I had made enough to, take my wife out to dinner for her birthday. Yeah, that, that would calm her down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pay for Christmas. And then yeah. a couple of days after, you know, like in a five or six day period, I had made enough to, to cover everything, to cover the car payment, to cover the rent, yeah. to cover the phone bill, to cover Christmas. And that kind of gave me a, a different sense of like accomplishment. Like, you know what? Like, 
could do this. Yeah. I can do this. Yeah. And yeah. and that's that's just kind of what I did. And I was, you know, I was on Facebook. I was posting every day, every day, and I was tagging everybody and like. I was flooding people's pages with, <laughs> you know, I got window tent specials, you know, I got this, I got that. So let's set it up. And that's cool though. You know, fast forward, here we are seven years later and I'm not, I'm no longer tinning windows in my driveway or, yeah. you know, I've made, I've, you know, obviously I haven't hit like any high level of, income or like super successful yet but i what matters to me is like now i have three kids yeah my wife's still a stay-at-home mom and i'm still able to provide for them mm -hmm. and i believe like that alone makes me feel at least a certain level of successful like yeah you beat absolutely. your drug addiction mm -hmm. you you know worked on a relationship with god you have three healthy children you're able to provide for them and you no longer work for the man like you've been yeah. in business this will be year number well december of 16 so i mean what are we seven eight years in now so it's like but it's you know in eight years you know, obviously in the entrepreneurial world, like it can be a roller coaster. So yeah. Yeah, um, it's, it's been tough at times and it's been really good at times, but now I am blessed and fortunate enough to where I have made the relationships and the connections and I've worked hard enough to where I'm able to, I've, built a name for myself like across the nation like i now i'm no longer in one spot like right now i'm in texas i've been here two and a half weeks before i was here i was home for a week and then before that i was in texas again for two and a half weeks and you know i've been all over texas i've been all over the place you know whether it be yeah, yeah installing window film or whether it be you know wrapping a fleet of 30 to 50 to 80 vehicles or you know rebranding a vehicle or a fleet of vehicles and you know now we've moved from ohio to fort myers florida um so now i'm like i'm slowly being able to build the life and give my family the life that I've always dreamed about. Yeah. Yes. You know, we're in sunny Florida now. You got a beautiful house. You're by the water. Um, so they're happy and we absolutely love it. And I get to travel the world and see new places and make more connections and get paid for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool, man. it's, um, love it. That's kind of, that's how I got into the entrepreneurial world. Yeah, yeah. I was left addiction and was mainly really just trying to prove to myself that you are worth it. You are capable of achieving something. You are capable of building something. And that, you know, just because you come from a troubled past or you did spend so many years doing drugs or this or that like it doesn't it doesn't matter like yeah yeah no matter what your past is if your heart's in it and you work hard enough you can accomplish anything yeah yeah that's good brother man i i relate to so much of your story uh I battled with addiction most of my life. Um, you know, my last battle was was alcoholism. Uh, my first battle was uh, meth. You know, it started out as like um, downers in the uh, any form of opiate. You know, that was um, 
but then uh when i grabbed uh, a hold of of meth it's like all the opiates just like i don't want nothing to do with those like this is this is my thing here and meth uh, was my drug of choice too yeah <laughs> yeah kind of, took me uh, like, go ahead no i mean just like to hear that like obviously like i didn't know that part about your past you know we met a couple years ago at i think it was zach babcock's first event yeah yeah when we met and that's really when i first dove into like self-development and trying to become the best version of myself in a much more stronger way than just beating addiction or starting a business like really trying to cultivate the right relationships with the right people that way i can get in the right rooms and have the right conversations but it is an awesome it was awesome to hear you say that like to know that you know obviously if you're you know if you have a history with meth then you probably know that like methamphetamine has a two percent recovery rate yeah it's pretty two percent of the people that use it can get off of it and turn their life around and never look back yeah and i quit everything cold turkey like i just was on like an eight day bender and woke up one day and i said enough's enough wow. i wasn't brought into this world to live this life yeah and i left everything behind and i never looked back so yeah um, yeah man that's so good proud of myself but proud of you too because i i can experience you know i know from experience that it's it's not an easy one to beat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, fortunately, I um, you know, I kicked it at a very young age. I had to. Uh, I, was, I was living on the streets very young. I was taken away when I was ten and uh, wore the court and stuff and uh, run away, drop out. You know all the typical stuff. Um, uh, helping helping the older older guys. You know, cook dope and yeah, and all that stuff. But. Uh, yeah it's funny a cop took me in man <laughs> it's a really funny story when i tell people i'm like because we're you know we're uh i was raised in a skinhead environment and um you know we uh we did think highly of of the police if you know what i mean yeah absolutely <laughs> now i get it <laughs> anyways the cop took me in and uh he's spent four years with me man uh you know um being kind of like a dad figure and mentor me he was just, just a big dude man and uh lift weights and uh had a great marriage and had things and i'm like gosh i've never seen a man like this in my life you know we're just surrounded by uh addiction and and pain and stuff and men beating their wives and it was it's was crazy to um experience that i did have to go round two with alcohol you know i thought uh i thought that you know it'd be uh it'd be okay for me and so you know i did a second round of addiction that uh, led me into a pit too but uh you know i took uh i got two rounds and i kicked their ass twice bro <laughs> <laughs> no i've struggled with the alcohol i've struggled with the back when i was you know, back when I was doing meth, I wasn't only doing meth, like I was doing everything except heroin. So like, that's a long list of like <laughs> speeding and uppers yeah, and you know, yeah. the everything I was, you name it, I was doing it. Like I'm here to party. What can we get ourselves into? <laughs> yeah. So I read, uh, related highly to about the sink or swim thing, man. Cause, um, you know, each entrepreneur journey that I started, uh, and it has been a roller coaster, just like you said, like there's been good times and bad. I, I, I filled out an application twice. I thought, you know, this is, this, uh, this ain't going to work, man. I need to go get a job, you know, and I basically quit a couple times. Uh, and then something happened where it would come through and I'd get back focused back on track and stuff. But, uh, the, so the first entrepreneur journey, I sold, uh, an iPhone for 300 bucks. It was, <laughs> You know, didn't have much money at all. And I'm like, what are we going to do with this? So we invested in some furniture to kind of restore and flip. And we ended up selling it for double. And we're like, holy smokes. And so we're like, gosh, let's get two of them this time. Right. So then we got two of them. And then we started posting on Facebook Marketplace and selling and flipping the furniture. And it was like, there were some weeks that we did like five to seven uh, pieces a week. And we were like making bank. We're like, wow off of just selling a 
a phone, a three hundred dollar phone, um, right. started this whole business that uh, that went for a couple years, you know. Um, but yeah, backs against the wall, man. That uh, some of us need that though. You, me, and me, and you might be similar on that. We need to be put in a very hard place for us to come out swinging or something. <laughs> well, that's you know, it, in my opinion. having your back against the wall mm -hmm. is in my personal opinion that's the best spot you can be in because so yeah my opinion is with your back against the wall is probably the best place that it could be in some instances because you don't have anywhere else to go. Yeah, yeah. Take that step. You have to move forward. That's the only direction. <laughs> yeah. You gotta like, make it work, you, man. You have no you have no other option. <laughs> yeah. So like I believe that like I perform best under pressure. Sure. Yeah. And when my back's against the wall, that's when it pushes me to take a step that maybe if my back wasn't against the wall, I might have been afraid to take. Yeah. Yeah. But with my back against the wall, like now I have no other option. Like I have to take this step. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I get that. Hey, brother, I would like to uh, dive into some of your uh, fitness stuff because, um, you know, I'm on this new fitness journey myself. I lost a lot of weight. Uh, gosh, when you seen me, I was probably at my heaviest. Uh, like, no, you look good now, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lost a lot of weight. Anyways, I'd like to uh, uh, pick your brain as far as, um, you know, the activities and what you're doing inside of the gym. Like, treat us like... Uh, like noobs because you know a lot of the guys that listen to this they haven't even really started you know their journey that much like haven't really done anything so uh speak to us very very plainly about your routine and um so we can get some wisdom from you brother so as far as fitness like i started in the gym probably shortly after i started my business because i was listening to all these motivational videos of all these entrepreneurs and like a lot of the successful ones have that morning routine of like they go to the gym and it prepares them mentally for the day. And so like I started in the gym and then like for five years, I really went with no direction, like no real workout plan. I was still eating like crap. Um, but I was there every day. Like I would show up and I would do random workouts and, you know, I would do, I was doing my best to just keep showing up. Yeah. yeah. And a couple of years ago I met, um, got connected with a personal trainer and, um, he is actually in our uncaged group. Um, so met Mickey, talked to him for a while, got connected with him. And then about a year ago is when I pulled the trigger and hired him as a personal trainer. And nice. that's kind of what really slingshotted me forward. Because like, if you look at a, a picture from me a year ago or two years ago to looking at a picture now, it's like, holy cow, like the transformation, it's crazy. Yeah, um, yeah, but a lot of it has to do with you can't just you can't just show up and work out random muscles like <laughs> just just show up and I'm gonna I'm gonna hit all these machines and I'm gonna do something and one day I'm gonna see a result from it like and it like I didn't know anything but it after hiring him and learning from him like a lot of it has to do with our diet. So like I do my best to track all of my macros now and 
you know, try to eat a certain level of protein and a certain level of carbs a day. And, but like the gym, like I have a certain schedule, like, and we'll do like a push, like a push day, a pull day, and then legs. So okay. like I go seven days a week and like Monday I'll do a push day to where it's more, you know, more like chest and stuff like that. And then the next day I'll do more of like a pull day, which is more like your back and everything like that. And then, you know, legs and I'll just, I'll rotate it out like every other day, you know, we'll do push and then we'll do a pull and then we'll do legs and then I'll circle back around and do a push pull and legs. And then on normally on Sundays, I'll do, just kind of like a general full body workout. Like I'll hit some legs, I'll hit some arms, I'll hit some back and just kind of just hit everything that I can. But what I've started to do here in probably the past eight months is no matter what muscle group that I'm working on, mm -hmm. like every day I always make sure that I hit the treadmill first thing for 30 minutes and I'll generally put the incline on like a, anywhere from a four to a seven incline and I'll put the speed at about anywhere from 2.5 to three and that way it's kind of it's almost serves as like you're walking uphill yeah um at a fast pace so it kind of it gets everything going um, and then I'll go do whatever muscle group that I'm working on. So like, I know like push and pull and legs and, you know, some days I'll break it down and I'll be like, you know, today's like a, a back and bicep day or like a, a chest and triceps and, you know, but no matter whether I'm doing back and buys or chest and tries, like. I always make sure that I throw the treadmill in there and I always make sure that I do abs. Um, and it just, it, it's what works for me, but I believe when it comes to fitness, like different things work for different people. Sure. So like yeah. you have to find what works for you for one, but for two, like, like your diet and like your food intake and to make sure you're getting enough protein because you know, all of that is important collectively as one. Um, but the fitness has definitely not only helped me in my business because I'm a firm believer that like you're going to give, like if you had, let's say you had two contractors come up to bid a job for you and you've got one that is like lean and in shape and you can tell that he takes care of himself and he handles himself well and he presents himself well. Yeah, yeah. And then you have another one that, you know, is kind of sloppy and super overweight and doesn't yeah. really carry himself well. I believe that you're going to give more respect yeah. to the person that yeah. presents themselves better and carries themselves and is more in shape because of the way that they present. I believe that yeah. your impression, like your first impression means everything. Um, but the, the gym and fitness is definitely, I always say to people, like, I traded my drug addiction for a gym addiction. Now, <laughs> the gym is what I'm addicted to. Like, no matter if the world is burning down around me, who wants to go to the gym? Like, I'll be in the gym. <laughs> if the world's burning down, we're all going to die, but at least I'm going to look good when I die.
<laughs> and on top of that, I'm setting a good example for my kids because, you know, they're going to want, well, if dad goes to the gym, then, then I should go to the gym. But I want my kids to be healthy. I want my kids to be in shape. I want my kids to, to feel good about themselves because I do believe that if you look good, you'll feel good. And a healthy body is a healthy mind. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's um, so good, brother. That's, that's really pretty good. much the fitness for me, and that's it's really impacted my life a lot. Like not only in business, but like mentally. Like it's hard to. It's hard to look in the mirror like like when you look at yourself like if you look good and you're in shape and like it's gonna it's gonna make you feel good about yourself. Yeah, yeah, confidence and yeah. Mm -hmm. The confidence and the mindset and mm -hmm. you know, all of that collectively I believe it all plays a part in our success. Yeah, yeah, it sure does, man. Gosh, man, uh, I just wanted to thank you so much for for taking the time. I also wanted to uh, give you the opportunity to tell where people they can uh, find you at. So, uh, if you want to like drop your social media and stuff, where where people can find you and uh, connect with you if they want to. Yeah, um, and I appreciate you having me on. I mean, it was absolutely it was fun chopping it up with you. I know we've been you know, kind of connected and following each other for a couple of years now. And I've seen your growth and I'm sure like, yeah, I blast my stuff all over social media. So like, I know that it can be seen and I'm, you know, it's, I just love seeing the people around me. I love watching everybody grow. Yeah. Yeah. Because if anything, it pushes me to grow more. Like, like if they're growing, then I can grow. And then yeah. we can all grow together, which makes the world a better place, which puts us all, which makes everybody better collectively. Yeah. Um, so I appreciate you taking the time to have me on here. Um, as far as social media and how you can reach me, um, I have a few Facebook pages. I don't use them all anymore. The one, um, so it's just Julian Fligger on Facebook. Make sure you get the one with the blue check mark that's verified because that one is me. The other one are old accounts that I've done, forgot passwords to from my younger, dumber days. And, <laughs> um, as far as the business Facebook page, it's Precision Wraps and Tent LLC. Um, Instagram um, is Precision underscore Julian. And, you know, just. Uh, that's probably the best way to reach me. Any, any type of social media, I always answer my messages, always happy to help talk to people, um, give insight, you know, anything that I can do to provide value for anybody. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, brother, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Uh -huh. Awesome.